right, so we are on, um, we've talked about the various um, phyla of invertebrates. We went through all of them. So today we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about insects. So again, we're in the arthropod phyla. We're in the class Insecta. And there are many, many, like we said yesterday, 75% of all animals are in this one class, insects. Has the widest diversity of any group. 95% of all um, animals are invertebrates. 75% are insects. So it's a big proportion of them. And so we're going to talk about some general characteristics. Most of what we talk about on this slide applies to um, many insects. Not everything, but most. So they have a similar, some similar characteristics. So this is a grasshopper, sort of a generalized. Now people may think, you know, you catch a grasshopper, that a grasshopper is a grasshopper. There's actually over 10,000 species of grasshoppers alone of that group. So there are a lot of um, different types of grasshoppers. We're just going to be talking about a general grasshopper. You know, they're related to crickets and cicadas and other things. Um, but first off, like we just said earlier, insects have three body sections, okay, um, versus like arachnids, which have two. Um, so the three body sections, I'm sure you could probably guess number one is what? The head. Yeah, the head. And the head of the um, insect contains... The, many of the sense organs, the antennae, the eyes, okay. um, the mouth, the mouth parts. How about the second section in? Joey? Abdomen? Not quite. We'll get there. But before the abdomen, Emma? Thorax? Yeah, that's called the thorax. Is the thorax is where the wings and the legs attach. has many of the digestive organs as well. Nope. All insects have head, thorax, and then abdomen. That final section is called the abdomen. The abdomen contains um, reproductive organs, contains part of the respiratory system. So those are the three body sections. Um, all right, so speaking of sense organs, um, number four. What is that? Courtney? Those are the antenna. Um, and many insects have antenna. And they are also sense organs. They bring in um, sensory information in several ways. So they are sensitive to motion. They also are sensitive to certain chemical signals, like a sense of smell would be. And so they relay that information to the rest of the nervous system. Um, so the antenna are very important. Does every insect still have an antenna? Every insect? Um, as far as I know, but there may be some exceptions. Um, then we have number five. So what is number five? Nicole? The eye. The eye, but probably know that insects have a unique type of eye. Do you know what it's called? Yeah, they have, their eye is made of multiple lenses all in one area. And the word for it um, is one that's familiar. We've used it several times. A microscope with multiple lenses. Yeah. A word with multiple parts. A um, molecule that's made of many elements. Oh. Jonathan? Compound eye? Yeah, it's called a compound eye. Compound meaning many parts. And so here's an actual photograph of a compound eye. You can see it a little better. You can see all those little individual lenses that make up the eye. It also has some simple eyes, um, and two compound eyes, and usually three simple eyes. They're in the front. You can't see them in this picture. You see, it shows like if they have to like kill a bug or something, they have like all of them. Yeah, I don't know if um, I don't think we can really understand 
So they, they make that say this is like what the insect sees. I don't think we can really understand that because they don't have a real brain. They have like enlarged areas of nerve tissue. So maybe that's, I don't know, it's hard to say because it's a completely different perspective. Kind of like yeah, there's lots of little probably images. On uh, number six, the grasshopper has a complex mouth. These are called the mouth parts. And there are many different sections and different parts that are used for various purposes. Many grasshoppers are herbivores. They eat leaves and plant matter. Some are omnivores. They might eat small insects and things. But they have these mouth parts that are specialized for chewing, for cutting through leaves, for grinding and chewing them up. They also have salivary glands where digestion begins and then they ingest that food into the digestive system. Those are the mouth parts. When you're looking at the grasshopper today, you can kind of open up and see how they move. Jonathan? One time we found a dead grasshopper on our lawn, and then we took it to my dad. It looks like there was a dead grasshopper. Oh, cool, yeah. So in ninth grade, you'll probably um, dissect. So we're looking at grasshoppers today. In ninth grade, they dissect grasshoppers. They separate all the various parts and separate the mouth parts and the antenna and mount them on paper. Uh, um, but we, we were not going to get into that detail. All right, so number seven then, in the abdomen of the insect are these tiny little holes. They're called spiracles, and they are what the insects use for breathing. These are sort of openings that lead to tubes that go inside of the insect's body. It doesn't have a lung. Okay? Basically, these tubes let air in where oxygen can then diffuse into the cells of the insect. So they work on a different respiratory system than we might be uh, familiar with. But those holes are the spiracles. Yeah, all insects have this spiracle. Yep, that's how they breathe. Number eight is a reproductive organ. This is a female grasshopper. So insects come in different sexes. They have different reproductive organs. This is a female grasshopper. Um, insects reproduce sexually. And so in the grasshopper, for example, during mating, which is in you know, springtime usually, the male um, injects sperm into the female's abdomen and makes its way to eggs inside of the abdomen and fertilizes them. But then what happens with those eggs is the female will um, often go and dig into the ground, a little burrow, with this ovipositor and sort of dig a little area deposit the fertilized eggs there, and then they just sit there for months, basically throughout all the rest of the winter until they're ready to hatch. Okay? And then after, in the springtime usually, those eggs hatch, and then immature grasshoppers emerge from those areas um, and start their, their growing process. So that ovipositor is only present in the female grasshopper. When you look at your grasshoppers, um, you can tell if it's male or female by looking at the end of the abdomen. It has these four pronged, sort of pointy things at the end. That's a female. That's the ovipositor used for digging and inserting those eggs into the soil. If it's just sort of rounded and, and closed without those four prongs, then it's a male grasshopper. Also in the female, usually the abdomen is a little bit longer. Um, number nine are the wings. So in the grasshopper, there are multiple wings. There's four. This is common in many insects. Um, and the top wings are not used for flying. What do they, anyone know what they are used for? Tristan? Sometimes. Sometimes. Bianca? They use it to Oh, sometimes. They use the bottom wings for that often. They do jump, but they use the bottom wings to propel themselves as well and to sort of fly through the air. If you, think, if you ever look closely at a ladybug, the parts that are spotted, those are the upper wings, actually. Looks like the exoskeleton. Yeah, so what happens when a ladybug flies? The shell comes down. Yeah, they, those parts sort of lift up, and then the wings that they use to actually fly are underneath there. So what do you think those upper wings are for? Yeah, they're protective because the actual wings used for flying are very thin. They can easily be damaged. So they have a hard sort of um, covering that's the top wing that protects the wings underneath. So when the grasshopper is going to fly, it opens up those covers, the wings come out, and then it can fly. Can I have a question? Yeah. Um, 
Um, and finally, number 10 are obviously the legs. Like all insects, the grasshopper has six legs. They're attached to the abdomen. Um, two of the grasshopper's legs are uh, much larger, and they're used for propelling the grasshopper. It starts flight by jumping high into the air and then starts to fly. Those legs are also used to make the sound that grasshoppers and crickets and things make. They rub those um, legs very um, quickly against the wings or against the abdomen. That makes the sound that those insects make. What percent of um, the animals in the area actually eat like very small? Very. Well, I mean, because when we get, I gave you those numbers, yeah. we're talking about how many species of all known species are insects or invertebrates. Oh. So, Humans are just one species out of millions. Oh. All right, yeah, Joey? Yep. Um, finally, this is just a picture. It really shows the same things. The only added organ here is the tympanum, or the tympanal organ, which is an area that's used for hearing. And it's over, it's located on the, uh, on the thorax. And you can see that when you look at the grasshoppers today. Oh, God. All right, any questions about any of that? No.